What's up everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is William and today's video is going to be about manual shooting and more specific uh, I'm going to learn you folks out there how to shoot in manual mode and hopefully you will start creating uh, better photos and better videos yourself. Today's video is going to consist of three parts. The first part is going to be about what manual shooting is and a little explanation about how it's done. Um, the second uh, part is going to be about the three most important settings on your camera uh, to change uh, when shooting in manual, which is aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And then the third part is going to be video and photo examples um, uh, that I've taken, uh, so you guys uh, hopefully can get an idea about uh, which settings to use in certain situations. But let's just jump straight into the first part. The settings we're gonna be changing today uh, are almost 100% uh, identical on every camera but uh, the design and the intervals might change from camera to camera. Um, in today's video I'll be using my Nikon D5600 which uh, was the video uh, you also saw in my previous video. First of all, we need to change our camera into manual mode, which is done on the mode dial uh, on top of your camera. Um, you need to change it from whatever mode it is in right now uh, towards the manual mode, which is uh, shown with an M uh, on most cameras. You'll notice that right now your camera uh, just became uh, much more uh, customizable and there's a, a lot of new options that has been unlocked. Manual mode gives you, as it says in the name, manual control over the camera and it makes you like kind of the boss, uh, which also means that the camera won't change anything automatically unless you tell it to. As an example, uh, my Sony a6300 and I guess every other Sony camera has the ability to uh, run the ISO on uh, auto mode uh, while in manual mode, but well, I don't think that's uh, possible on, uh, on every uh, DSLR or mirrorless brand out there. Of course, there are still uh, some uh, some settings that will run automatically uh, and is uh, able to run automatically while in manual mode. Um, as an example, your autofocus uh, is still available in manual mode. The fact that the camera doesn't change any settings automatically um, puts a lot of pressure on you as the photographer to uh, to change the settings to get the uh, the most uh, the best possible result uh, and change the uh, settings correctly so you get the best possible result. That's why we uh, now head on to the second phase of the video which is talking about uh, the three major settings in uh, shooting when shooting in manual which is as mentioned aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Let's talk about aperture which is also known as the f-stop. The aperture um, changes the amount of light that the uh, lens lets in and we can actually compare the aperture to the human eye because um, when you're outside on a very sunny day your pupil gets very very small which means it lets in a very uh, little amount of light um, otherwise if it was just staying all normal your uh, your like your sight would be totally overexposed and uh, almost only white um, and the same happens or the opposite happens when you're uh, outside uh, in, the, in the night or if you're uh, laying in your bedroom uh, and you've turned off your light your pupil would get bigger so it, because it tries to let in more light so you actually uh, would be able to see that's also the thing that happens when you uh, first turn on the light you won't be able to see anything but then slowly uh, your pupil gets bigger uh, and lets in more light and therefore you're able to see more. So in general that means that when shooting outside you should use a high f-stop which means that the, uh, the aperture inside of your lens is very narrow uh, and when uh, inside of a dog room you should use a low number of f-stop which means your aperture is wide open well the aperture isn't as simple as that because the aperture also affects the amount of the frame that's in focus so when using a very wide open aperture 
only the person that you would like to be, no, that you want to, uh, to have in focus uh, will be in focus and the background and the non-focus area and out of focus area will actually have this very nice and blurred bokeh. When, on the other hand, when using a high number of ISO, a narrow aperture, uh, you're capable of having more of the frame in focus. So as an example right now, uh, if I turn my aperture uh, up so to a higher uh, F stop, uh, you would actually be able to both have my face in focus and also my computer screens behind me and probably also the wall. We can say that the aperture changes the visuals of our photo or video and of course you are able to use um, a low, uh, a low f-stop and a wide open aperture uh, in sunny days. This just means that you need to change uh, some other settings uh, at your camera which leads us to number two setting. Uh, number two major setting on your camera when shooting in manual. The shutter speed is the amount of time that your camera uh, lets in light. So it means that when your shutter speed is very low, as an example, um, 1 over 20, it lets in light 1 20th of a second. And when it's very, very high, it could be 1 over 1000. It only lets in light for one of a thousand of a second. So the lower uh, your shutter speed is, the more light and the brighter your photo and video gets and of course the other way around as well. Let's take a look at shutter speed for video. As you might know, a video uh, consists of frames and a lot of photos shown um, very fast. Um, for instance, this video is sh uh, shot at uh, 24 frames per second, um, which means that my camera uh, takes 24 pictures every second and, and then compresses it uh, into a video. And because, uh, 20, because those 24 frames are shown uh, in only one second, the human eye uh, will see it as a video. When shooting a video, we have some fundamental rules for shutter speed um, uh, and those fundamental rules uh, gives us the most cinematic look. So, for instance, as, you, as I just told, I'm shooting in 24 frames per second uh, and your shutter speed should always be double the amount uh, of FPS. So, my ideal shutter speed would be 1 over 48. Um, because 48 is double the amount of 24 but um, on almost every camera 1 over 48 isn't available so you just have to choose the nearest possible shutter speed so for example I'm using 1 over 50 because that's the nearest shutter speed um, available on my camera of course you can still use a higher shutter speed if your image is too bright uh, after setting your aperture but this will make your video look choppy and it will have this uh, unrealistic uh, motion cadence which means that your uh, moving subjects in frame won't have the realistic blur that I'm looking for as a filmmaker. In this specific scenario, this simple add-on to your camera comes in handy. It's called a ND filter. Basically, it's just an add-on to your lens. So, a ND filter is basically, or it is basically sunglasses for your lens. Um, these ND filters, they come in different shades, and some of them are even uh, variable ND filters, which means that you can turn them to make it darker and to make them lighter. Adding on a ND filter to your lens um, makes you possible or and able to remain your wide aperture and to keep your shutter speed uh, at the uh, at the most um, cinematic one. Using a too low shutter speed isn't good either. If you already um, set your aperture as wide as open but you still think that your photo is too dark, lowering the shutter speed won't help you either because when changing the shutter speed to a too low number it will give you this very 
we give it a very excessive motion blur, which we definitely will uh, want to want to avoid, like for every cost. Avoid it, please. Don't do it. Shutter speed for photos, on the other hand, is a lot different because the shutter speed when taking photos, like we don't have any um, specific rules. Um, like your shutter speed, it depends a lot on uh, on the speed uh, that your subject or person. Uh, moves in so if you have a very fast moving subject you should use a relatively high shutter speed it could be 1 over 250 or even 1 over 500 um, and if you are having a a, a, sub, a non moving subject um, using a lower shutter speed um, will give you better quality because the camera then doesn't have to add on light to the photo to make it bright enough your shutter shouldn't be too low either, because when shooting handheld, um, the minor um, movements in your hands um, and a too low shutter speed will result in a bit of a blurred photo when zooming in at the quality one be as good. The very slow shutters such as 5, 10, 15, 20 or even 30 seconds are used to shoot either uh, astrophotography, photos of the sky, or long exposure of cars moving, uh, as this one. And when shooting uh, these very, uh, very, very slow shutters, it is necessary to uh, have your camera on a tripod uh, of some sort, because again, the minor shakes and the minor movements in your hands um, will make the photo look terrible afterwards if you uh, if you haven't. Um, use the tripod like try to imagine me uh, having to hold my hands completely still for 5 10 or 13 seconds that's almost that, that is impossible the iso uh, and the third fundamental and major setting when shooting in manual is the amount of light that the camera adds on to the frame so the higher your iso is the more grainy your uh, your photo or your video becomes most cameras, they have a ISO range from 100 to 12,800 or 25,600. When shooting in the lower ISOs, you won't be able to tell uh, any difference uh, in quality, um, but the quality will lower significantly on almost every camera when passing 3000. Um, the amount of ISO the camera can use um, before or until the quality of the photo or video uh, lowers is very uh, varies a lot from camera to camera. When changing uh, these settings, I would highly recommend you to do it in this order: for video, first the shutter speed, then the aperture, and then the ISO uh, as the last one. And for photo, uh, either the aperture and the shutter speed first, and at the end the ISO. I would say that if you aren't very familiar with photography and if you just picked up uh, your new camera or you picked up your old one I would, uh, and, and you are having a hard time um, changing the internal um, menu and navigating through the internal menu, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to find a specific uh, guide that takes you through the internal menu system of your specific camera. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, guys and girls out there uh, who are doing a great, great job at doing videos where they take you through the whole menu system uh, of every specific camera out there, or almost every specific camera out there. So I will highly recommend you guys to find a video uh, here on YouTube um, and I can almost guarantee you that you will be able to find a guide um, to your specific camera that goes through the internal menu system. But uh, now let's head to the third part of the video, which is looking at some photo and video examples I've taken.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you found this video uh, interesting and hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you learned how to shoot in manual or at least uh, just, uh, just have some kind of a um, understanding of what manual shooting is now. If you guys uh, found this video interesting, which you hopefully did, please leave this video a like, then I know that uh, you liked it and uh, I know that you would like some more of these videos uh, in the future. And uh, please press the red subscribe button uh, underneath, uh, that would really be appreciated and please turn on the notifications, then you won't miss any of my futuristic videos. But until next time, see you guys out there, bye bye.